Hi, everybody. I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And we're the Streeters. Uh, welcome. Barb's the Streeter. Oh. <laughs> we're the Streeters. Welcome to the RDRV channel, where we teach and share everything we know about glass. And welcome to the Q&A. Yeah, welcome I hope to you Monday brought some night. questions. It's 7 o'clock. It is thunderstorms in the area here in South Carolina tonight. But you know what? It's all good. It's all good. Thank you all for tuning in tonight want to thank all of our new subscribers out there. Whoa, way to go this month. We appreciate it. That's right. We had a lot of questions come in uh, this week, and we have some questions already up on the board. We'll wait just a few minutes and get started, but I'd like to uh, welcome Larry Mary. Kathy is here from Massachusetts. John Golden is here. And... Uh, We've got a lot of people here already tonight, so welcome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, thanks for tuning in tonight, y'all. Thanks for hitting that notification button and so that it does tell you when we're ready to go live. We do have a couple announcements tonight, uh, one being that we have a new playlist on the uh, YouTube channel. I sent out a community notice, but you may have missed it. And if you go to that playlist, there's 32 videos on how to cut glass. So you can just watch those videos at your convenience. They're real short. And if there's one that you're really having a problem, you know, cutting glass and you find a video that you really like, you can just watch it and practice and watch it and practice. I mean, it just makes it easier for you. It does, Barbara. And explain, it doesn't really, I mean, it just shows you what tool, what pair of pliers is used for that specific cut, the narrow, you know, how, how narrow the glass is whether it's zigzaggy, crisscrossy, or Willie McNeely, those pliers will show you how to use it, and so will those videos. So we're also on TikTok, and you'll notice we're on Instagram, too. So we're just a little bit more active on social media. So I hope you'll join in and share, if you're on either one of those social media platforms, share what we're doing with people that you know that are doing stained glass as well. And share, you know, share it with your friends, too, you know. So um, Susan B is here from Maine and she says she's loving all the videos. Christine from Long Island. Um, Deborah Wade is here. Melanie's here. Thomas Sharp is here. Um, and Ray wow. is here. Hey, Ray. Everybody, thanks for tuning in, y'all, tonight. It's great to see you. Okay, so I'm trying to keep up here in a different way tonight, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. We're trying something new. We're trying something new. So let's see if I can, if I can. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to keep up working. with the chat, y'all. And uh, so uh, let's just start with questions. Let's go, Barb. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I had, there's a question. Uh, what's the difference between zinc and lead? Well, zinc is a... Uh, well, they're both metals, but zinc is a is a, a, a kind of a semi rigid metal, and uh, it oxidizes really easy. Lead is uh, not so rigid; it's very fluid and allows you to shape and bend the lead to conform to the glass without using a, uh, what they call a cane bender. Zinc is you're going to require to bend it, and anything other than a something like that is going to require a cane bender and uh, you know cascade does make one of those they're about 250 dollars and it's a great tool to add to your shop tools is a uh, cane bender because it does work with lead too and it works on larger lead as well as smaller lead so ones that I, I just the zinc is a is a metal uh that's more rigid than the lead is i prefer zinc is really like a i don't know a lot of windows were made with zinc that were indoors uh, a while, you know, in a, in a certain period. And it's, to me, it's too rigid. The solder joints break because it, it doesn't kind of, it doesn't flow with what's going on. Uh, it doesn't like to catch air indoors because it'll rip the solder joints apart. So I prefer to use lead over zinc uh, in general period, unless I have to when I'm restoring something. Thank you, Ed. Uh, let's see. Joan is here. Mike Waite is here. Uh, Cat St. Jane said, who is Willie McNilly? You know what? He's just a guy that I made up. And uh, it's kind of instead of messing something up, 
we just used to uh, tell tell of help don't Willie McNelly it. So we want to make sure that it's done correctly. <laughs> so if I say to, if I say to you when you're copper foil and don't Willie McNelly it, that just means do it right. Don't shortchange it. Don't take a shortcut. Do it the way it's supposed to be done and the way it's prescribed, and you'll be much happier with your work. Burnt Raw Toast is here. Hey, Burnt Raw Toast. Good to have you in tonight, man. Okay. All right. I had some really good questions come in this week, and I, okay. I'll share them with y'all. Uh, Julie Graves. Julie here tonight? Yeah, there she is. Hey, Julie. <laughs> hey, Julie. Um, okay. So uh, Julie wanted to know about the rubber tip replacements on the mini or on the running pliers. On the running pliers in general. Well, you know, I, I, they may sell and y'all may have time to do the research and find, you know, little sets of uh, rubber ends for your running pliers, but I got something to show you. This right here is called plastic dip and you can dip your, you clean your running plier tips really well. I mean, clean them good. And then you dip the tip of them in this. Hang it with a pair of a wire or something. Let it dry, and it's not. You can let it dry for only five minutes before you can put another layer on it. On your running pliers, I suggest two layers, and then let it dry for 24 hours before you decide to use it on your glass. You're gonna love it. You can use this to put new rubber on your even on the handles on your running pliers. You know, after a while, your favorite tools do wear out a little bit. This will reassure that you're going to at least get the handles straightened out. So this is yellow. It comes in blue and green and black, all the different colors, red, but uh, we just had yellow because that's, that's kind of what we use around here. And it makes it, the yellow makes your pliers easy to see. Uh, update. The six and a half inch running pliers are here. They are, uh, the green rubber is uh, extinct, <laughs> like the dinosaurs, but now they have blue rubber on them. Same pliers, just a different coating on the handles and on the jaw. So anyway, they're in stock. They're available. Uh, Barbara will have them, probably have them on the website tomorrow. You can, uh, you can go right to the website and order them, and we'll ship them out. They, it's free shipping on those running pliers for y'all. Okay, so Joan um, Morrow is here from Ohio. Um, let me see. Stephanie Dunn is here for the first time, and Jennifer Enlow is here. Joyce is here. Hi, Joyce. Um, so let's go to the next question. Um, maybe the mark. Okay, I want to maybe smart to mark the middle of the line on your custom dip pliers. Yes, do that too. It is. I. You know what. I, I, you know what I call it, that mark on my pliers? I call it idiot proof it. <laughs> <laughs> because I'll grab them wrong, even though there's a, you know, there's that that nut on the top, that set screw. Sometimes I will pick them up wrong. And maybe later on tonight, I'll show you that there is a way for you to use your running pliers upside down to help you break the glass. Uh, but it may be, uh, hopefully that'll work out and I'll show you that later on tonight. Thomas says they make it in a spray also. Oh, that's okay. cool. That seems like it'd be a little bit messy, but yeah, that's good. I'd dip it in the can, you know, I don't uh, know. What brand are those um, running pliers? Do you know what brand they are? I'm not sure. Well, I'll look. Yeah, I'll, I'll have look. to look them up. They're They'll the be on the website. The brand yeah. will be on the website. Tomorrow should be up tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. I just feel the six and a half inch pliers are just so easy to work with and they do a good job and they're not so cumbersome in your hand and they're definitely not heavy. So. Uh, those particular pliers will be through our website, not from Amazon. I couldn't find the small ones on Amazon. I no, mean, you're welcome to look. But yeah. And we've been waiting about eight weeks on these and we finally got them. So, um, the, Julie also asked, are you supposed to end the cut where you come off the glass? If you all have been watching the shorts, I think you'll uh, see a lot of that where Ed cuts the glass and then turns it around. And, and that's, a, yeah, it's a habit. It's a habit it of mine. The, yeah. What I call the hot side. Yeah. But. So when you're, if you're scoring, you know, if you're scoring a straight line and, you know, I always tell you to pull your straight lines. So when you pull that cutter, you're coming off on this end. That's the end. You want to break it. 
when I'm cutting patterns, I'm cutting patterns. And when I come to the end and come off, that's where I start to break the glass and work my way back around to where I started. I Barbara calls it the hot side of the cut. I call it the hot side of the cut. It's it's just seems to work better that way, whether you're using having to use your running pliers or your grousing pliers, cutting it from the hot end or what we call a hot end. Cutting it from the hot end seems to work much better, whether it's a window glass, you know, eighth inch art glass or even quarter inch plate, heavy glass, tabletop glass, anything. Break it from the end you finished on and you'll see it in the shorts. I, it's just a habit and something that I, I do all the time and I don't even think about it. Uh, that's because you have success with it and you're doing it subconsciously. So after you practice, you'll start doing that. But uh, if you if it works, it does work. Uh, Bird Roll Toast said they're currently using an osculating spindle belt sander uh, until they commit to a glass grinder. Can you suggest a tight grit of sandpaper? Uh, he just got in, so, or they just got in some silicon carbonate. Is there something better? Uh, I put a nice edge. Um, I use I use a disc sander in the back, and I put a nice edge on shelves and tabletops with a 220 grit uh, wet dry paper. 220 and I, and grit. 220 grit, and I'm running about 2600 RPMs on it. So you don't want to sit there and let it get hot, but it will knock the edge off. And it'll clean it up and scratch it up. So, um, uh, 120 is going to be too uh, too flaky. You definitely don't want to use that. It's going to spit glass everywhere. Yeah, it's too coarse. 220 yeah. is good. A good number. Yeah, and there's there's things that you can use besides a grinder. And if that's working good for you, yeah, and you don't have to buy a grinder. Yeah, you know the carborundum stone yeah. works really well. Barbara and I were talking about this on the way home today. The other thing that works really good is a, a heavy duty um, emery, board. emery board or fingernail file. If you're just doing one. like just taking the sharp off a couple pieces. Or you need to get rid of that flare that's on the back end and you're not sure exactly how to use your grousing pliers because that's what that hook jaw is for on the bottom of your grouser is to pick up and knock that flare off. But that's okay. Glass cutting school's coming up. Yes, yes. We have a video coming up that will kind of uh, go over all these cuts for you. We're trying to get all the videos made and put them all together for well, you. Well, we want to make uh, those of you that are still being frustrated while you're cutting glass because it doesn't seem to be working right. We're trying to we're trying to eliminate that part of the process for you. What's that? Frustration. Oh, <laughs> I know. Karen's here. Hi, Karen. Hey, Karen. Good to have you on board tonight. Okay, so if you have a question, just put it in the chat. I uh, don't see any questions, but if I'm missing something, Ray, just give me a holler and I'll find it here. Um, I had a question come in from Anna. Um, she wanted to know, are some, cutter, uh, some colors, not textures of glass, harder to cut? They are, and that's a great question because the, okay, so the colors... The colors of glass are created by using the metal oxides on the chart of elements, okay? So those colors, those, those elements, those oxides create different colors. And typically what happens when glass is hard, like uh, let's just say blue, okay? A cobalt blue glass is what we call a very soft glass. It's easy to cut and it's very, very forgiving while you are cutting it. Now, Let's drop back and go to a glass. Let's say, let's go to a opal less, an opalescent uh, Wismat glass, like a seafoam green. That's a very dense green. You're not going to even hear your glass cutter go over top of that. But I want you to remember, just because you can't hear your glass cutter doesn't mean you need to push harder. So yes, different colors require not the different pressure to cut them, but they require you to listen to your glass cutter and keep the same pressure from start to finish, whether you hear that score or not. So yes, 
Different colors are hard or soft. White's very dense. And anything that you get white stuck in with, if that color is going to be dense. But if you notice, when you roll across the white, you won't hear your cutter. But if you roll across it, let's say it's a transparent green mixed with it, you'll hear that glass cutter because, again, green is a soft color. Okay, Pinks are really hard to work with because they're just dense color. That's all they are. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I so could don't ramble be on fooled. about density don't all night. Don't be fooled by how it sounds. Just know that the dense colors you're not going to be able to hear. Right, right. And I've got some dense colors sitting here on my table tonight. And I've uh, got, but you're not going to hear them. Uh, and the way you can tell is just look at the edge of your glass and you'll see the colors stacked up, blue, white, green, and pink. So you know automatically, don't change the pressure that you're that you normally cut glass with just because you can't hear the score. It's there. Just cut your glass. And remember, don't stop because you fall in a pothole. Drive right out of it and keep on getting it. Thank you, Karen. You're very sweet. I appreciate that. <laughs> Karen had a question. How long can you leave foil on the glass? Thank you, Ed. That was that was a good answer. <laughs> I forgot to tell you. How long can you leave foil on the glass before you solder? And if it's been a while, what uh, other steps are there to help? And that was a question from Karen. Okay, Karen, you know how I feel about starting projects and not finishing them. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. But you it, know happens. What? Here, it happens. It happens a lot. And I understand. Uh, so yeah. what you want to do, though, is after you're done foiling and you haven't got back for a while, what I would do is go ahead and just steel wool everything. You're going to knock that oxidation right off that copper and get it together, get it soldered, get, you know, get it fluxed and get it soldered and get it put together and finish it up. Steel wool is going to be your friend if you've waited a long time and your copper foil is oxidized on the glass. It's not coming off the glass, Karen, but please go ahead, steel wool it, and then get that bad boy put together. Yeah, and another thing that helps is just to cover your work. If you know... White paper. Yeah, just cover it or a cloth or something like that just to keep everything off of it. Even yeah. though keeping the air off of it and everything, it yeah. Because really Karen, you know, the humidity, even where you are right there in the mount in the foothills of the mountains, is very similar to where we are down here. That humidity will just make things really, you know, a little bit more difficult when they sit up a little bit longer than normal. That's all. Okay, burnt raw toast. Oh, okay, burnt raw toast uh, has seen some people solder where they hold the solder on their piece and drag it along with the iron. Thoughts on this technique worth trying? Burnt raw toast, you better believe it's worth trying. But what you want to do is, is you, have to, you have to figure the soldering process out first and get that good. And I show a touch and go process, which will help out, help the beginners out a lot. But typically, if you turn your iron up on its side and your solder right there, and you if you get that temperature just right, which is going to be about 10 degrees above where you think it's just right, 10 degrees more, and you can't, you can't run any faster than the solder will melt. But I'll tell you what you want to do. If you're going to try that burnt raw toast, watch the solder behind the tip, not, not, not in front of it you know, not closest to you, but behind the tip as you're pulling and don't pull any faster then the solder can melt and beat up and you'll, you'll see it. Lay the iron tip on the angle on that chisel at about 45 degrees, eh, maybe, maybe 50 degrees and pull it right down. Take That's your right. time. It's imperative that the heat is right and then it's a little bit hotter and you can do that. I, people that have run miles and miles and miles of copper foil solder are the best at that that I've ever seen. Yep. Jennifer just became a member. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. Really appreciate appreciate it. it. Thank you very much. Uh, Ephraim is here and he said it was a pleasure to meet us and they love Conway and they'll be coming back. You didn't even give us a chance to give you a pop out there, man. <laughs> Ephraim, we really appreciate you guys stopping by. Enjoyed meeting your fiance and your future mother-in-law. We had a great time here in the studio 
And, uh, you know, when you're in our area, all you have to do is give us a call and come on over and visit with us and give us a shout out. And we'll we'll give you the grand tour of the shop. And uh, gosh, Barb, only two more weeks in the stained glass shop. So yeah, stained gla uh, glass is coming in now for the stained glass um, retail store. So we'll be showing a little bit of what's available once we get that all set up, show you our setup. And uh, we're going to be open on Wednesdays. So I have another question here. Okay, this Barb. is from Anna again. Is it bad for the cutter wheel to cut over another score? Absolutely. You only want to score your glass one time because, you know, and actually, y'all, if you think about it, cutting your glass is the wrong word because you're not cutting anything. You are your your uh, your glass cutter wheel. OK, is separating the surface, separating the molecules on the surface of the glass. And that is why it breaks along that it follows that separation of the molecules on the surface. So, and you're, you're better off, you know, because I have some people come in and they'll say, oh, Mr. Eddie, I tried to cut this mirror myself. I went over it three or four times and it still didn't break. Well, that's because it's not going to. You score one time and break the glass. Please don't run over your score a second time because it is, it's bad for the wheel. Uh, it's bad for the cutter, not the cutty. Uh Steve is here and he, Steve Trojak, and he wants to know, uh, do we recommend any particular solder because solder prices are so high and all over the place, basically. Yeah, and all over the place. Low, and yeah. I just, I just got a bunch in and I got. What kind did we get in? Uh, the uh, Amorway. Yeah, Amorway yeah. and Canfield. Amorway and Canfield are the two best solders on the market right now. Neither one of them pay us to mention their name, but I use Amorway. Uh, we have over the years that we've been in business, we've weeded out all the trash solders and, you know, and you, they do have trash in them. You know, it's just making up weight is what they're doing. So uh, Canfield, everybody, and uh, Amorway are the two, you know, the two solders that we use here in the building. And they are, you know, what? It, Without trying to sound smart, the answer to that question would be just use the cheapest solder you can. But the problem with that is when you go cheap, okay, then your work changes because you got all this trash in your solder, and you really don't, you really don't want that. So because you saved a couple bucks, now you got to worry about all the trash in your solder. You know, spend the extra two dollars and get, like I said, either the Amorway or the Canfield. And yes, it's expensive. So if any of you uh, on the chat have a solder that you're using that is a good price and is clean, please put it in the chat so the yeah, rest of our viewers the will white know metals, another yeah, uh, alternative. I just use Amorway and it's, you know, again, it's just a, the access of it. So. Yeah. Okay. And Canfield, Canfield, y'all know solder, their solder has been around for a long time. And it's probably uh, it's the best on the market because there's no trash in Canfield solder. Yeah, Canfield is the best, but it's pretty pricey. Maybe those prices will. But go you know better. what? Yeah, but you know if you're doing if you're doing a lot of copper foil, you should spend the extra two dollars on the Canfield so that you don't have any problems and that your solder looks like a million bucks when you're finished. Martha Crowder's here. Hi, Martha. Hey, Martha. Good to have Good you. Good to see you. Sky Dancer is here. And um, we, if you have a question, just put it in the chat and we'll be happy to answer. I have a question regarding, um, oh, this is just a simple question. Now, well, I think we answered this. We had a question about a rheostat. But I did answer it. If you have a rheostat on your iron, you don't need another one. And we've answered that before. So I'm checking that off. We're checking that one out. <laughs> um, uh, how often can I blame it on the... Okay. After my <laughs> first... <laughs> uh, burnt mall toast. After my first round 30 cuts, I finally must up, uh, messed up a cut that wasn't that difficult. How often can I, can I blame it on the glass? Um, as, as often as you like, whatever, <laughs> however you feel comfortable. But I, I, I will 
tell y'all something and uh, you know, y'all been watching the shorts that we put out and you see me using these grouse and flyers and I'm, I'm like, I'm just pulling down just enough to hear that, that score crack. If you're pulling down too hard, you're going to break the glass at its weakest point because you're not giving it time. It's not going to in, inside and S's and all that. They don't follow the curves when you, just because you, you break it on one end. You actually physically have to chase that run and follow it all the way to the end. And you'll find if you take your time, it's a lot of finesse involved in just going, think, ah, it started. Now let's work on it. Okay. It's just a lot of finesse involved in that. But once you take the time to do that, and a lot of it is getting that index finger knuckle under the glass, right up against your grousers, and you're kind of working it just, I mean, it's, anyway, try it, practice, 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 as I say, and uh, you can blame it, the glass breaking wrong on the glass as much as you'd like, because one thing about glass is it has no feelings, so you're not going to hurt its feelings. Uh, we had a question, how can you join um, as a member of the fan club? Go to the RDRV channel and there's a little uh, button at the top that says join. join. Yeah. And uh, just go to the main page on the channel. You may be able, it should be a little, here it is. Uh, if you look at the chat right be below where it's got the thumbs up and the live chat and share and all that. Right below that it says RDRV Glass Studio and it says C Perks. If you click that it'll take you to and explain you how, you know, all the perks and what you get and that kind of thing. But we'd love to have you. Yeah. Thank you all very Stephanie, much. Stephanie, go ahead and it. join. Thank you. Yeah. We'd love to have you on board with us. Diane is here from Colorado. And um, so Burnt Ralto said, great answer. It did. I hope that that worked for you because, you know, I, I'm really big on, on uh, like being a, when you're cutting glass and it's just not working and it becomes frustrating, my advice to anybody that that's happening to, and it happens to all of us, is just set your glass cutter down, walk away. I don't suggest turning on the television, but I'd suggest maybe telling Alexa to play your favorite song and then listen to it and then go back to work and you'll feel much better. Or just play your favorite songs while you're working. Yeah. And you know what? It's okay if, it, if the glass breaks because why? It's one of its properties. Yeah. You'll be fine. You'll Don't be fine. stress over it. Yeah. It's um, only glass. So uh, Mel says you can always blame the glass. I mean, just blame the glass. Don't blame yeah. yourself. No, no. <laughs> I always say it's either the cutter or the cutty. Yeah. So you can blame the cutter rather than blaming yourself. Music Mojo Therapy. That's right now. Um, Steve Trojak says he's in an RV in North Carolina right now. All right. And he doesn't dare cut glass in there, but inside. But are there any issues with working outdoors? Absolutely not. I think we just posted a video today. Three and was, of them. Three, three of them. Three little shorts we three. posted. I was actually cutting days. glass on the picnic table while I was cooking breakfast. He was cutting the reeds to go over the... Uh, overlay for the marsh scene for a project i was cutting so if you go to shorts there's three of them right in a row and i was actually cutting on the uh, barbara and i were like wow i can't believe this picnic table is level enough for me to cut this glass on so we wanted to do a short for you but i also needed to get these reeds cut so hey boom knocked it out on some uh, spectrum green glass uh green and white wispy wasn't it Barb? yeah just make sure everyone wears shoes in that area where you work yeah go and, and i wasn't near the food you know i was at the other end of the picnic table and uh it was a great thing for me to get that done today before we had to pack up and you know travel so it was good yeah it was fun and you you know, it's nice being outside. We took our grandson this weekend out in the RV. You know, gas prices got down to $3.23. I can handle that in the RV. I That's just can't right. handle five bucks. It's killing. That's right. Yeah. So we went camping for two nights and it was, we had a great time. And, uh, you know, any time that I get to spend with my grandson or any of my grandchildren is top notch to me. So, okay. Uh, Ray asked a great question. 
What is the best way to pick a good secondary background color that complements the first primary color of the main piece? Is there some kind of color complementary chart I can use? Yeah. Yes. A uh, color wheel, right? Uh, just you can get a color wheel, but you can go online and, and they have them as well. Um, but I find that uh, when I'm looking at colors like this project that we're working on with all these marsh colors in it and the sunsets and sunrises, uh, we're having to use our complementary colors are green and blue and our main colors and sunsets are oranges and yellow. So we're having to find a happy medium with these. It, it, it's requiring us to use different shades of those colors rather than just those colors. So it's kind of, uh, I'm excited about it because this, our last shopping spree helped us out a lot with the project. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a big color fan and I, I'm not a, I'm not a matchy matchy person, but uh, I understand that things do have to kind of flow together. And that's what I would, I would, I would concern myself with how they flow and what, you're trying to uh, achieve with your artwork, you know, as what do you think, Barb? Well, Mel just said Bullseye has a fantastic color wheel. That's right. Well, they, they do. do. Yeah. Uh, and it, it includes various types of colors, complementary, split, etc. cetera. Um, and, you know, a lot of the manufacturers of color come out with the new colors of the year every year. And they'll have the new color of the year, and then they'll have all the complementary colors that go with it. Yeah, not and just that's the something decorators. That comes out every, it. every year, the paint manufacturers. So that's good. Also, wallpaper is a good place if you if you can find a nice wallpaper or uh, fabric, because those people, you know, they they put all the complementary colors in right. there. So a piece of fabric, a piece of wallpaper, right. yeah. something and Ray, like that in the colors. You're right there in the PPG area. They're, they're plants right downtown on the river. Pantone. Pantone does that. Yes. Now, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So you, and, Color and, of the you year know, Ray, and I think Ray's in Pittsburgh. So he's got PPG right downtown. He, they have the probably the killer color wheel for color. PPG. Oh, <laughs> Pittsburgh yeah. paint and glass. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so there's a lot of variety of ways to find it, but I like to look at wallpaper and, and fabric and things yeah, like that. And, even, know, even dresses and things like that, you'll see all the colors. We're, that we're designing windows for someone's home. We go in the home and we take pictures because you, you really, you don't want to lock your customer into a specific color. What you want to lock them into is what you're doing for them is going to complement anything that they want to do in their home. Anything. Uh, uh, Diana McCann says she cuts glass in the RV that she lives in, and right now she's grinding outside. Yeah, yeah. I uh, think we cut, outside, we cut inside sometimes, but yeah, we cut uh, inside. If on we can the cut outside, table. it makes it easier. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to be doing a lot of crazy stuff, but if you're stripping borders and it's drizzling outside, cut your borders inside on your on your dining room table. You know, get you a small piece of plywood that fits maybe fits under the bus like we have. We have like. We have a two foot by four foot piece of uh, three quarter inch plywood that fits under the bus in a, you know, under the, uh, in a, you know, under there, we just undo it, drop it on the uh, dining room table. And now we have that. And then we just have a little shop back a little, uh, we have a one gallon shop back that we keep under the bus as well. And, um, and that's what we do our cleanup with. Okay, there's a couple good suggestions in the chat about color. So y'all, you know, look at those. And if you have any more questions, just put it in the chat. Um, and then let's see. Thomas says he just bounces his ideas off of an artist friend. <laughs> he has an artist friend. So. Well, you know, that's a, that's a good idea too, Thomas. And then bouncing your ideas off of, off of other people, uh, you know, like... Um, I think that, uh, you know, Ray, the the uh, the names that Susie uses for a deer, I bet she can come up with some pretty good color combinations <laughs> for you, too, buddy. Rochelle Otterize is here from Canada. Hey, good to have you, Rochelle. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Okay. Are you ready to do some glass cutting? We've had a lot of questions 
the, you know, this week about inside curves. Yeah, and I'm not sure if this is what what uh, the the two people that had basically the same question. I don't know if you're neighbors or not, but uh, had the same question, and I'm and I'm I'm guessing that this is what this is. And again, this this refers back <clears throat> uh, to uh, the burnt toast gentleman. Uh, is how hard you pull down or how hard you kind of pull away. So whenever you're ready, Barb, we can do whatever you want to do. Which, uh, okay, we're going to do a, uh, we're going to do a demo, right? Yeah, let's do a demo first because, I mean, I'm not, and you know what, y'all, I just because, <laughs> just because I really luck out and cut uh, some, uh, you know, uh, difficult cuts in front of you, it doesn't always work for me either. I, I'm I'm really no different than you all are. Um, okay, we're so ready. so you can see what I have here. I have these black lines drawn, and I want to show you. And I'm doing it on clear eighth inch glass because I want you to be able to see this the score when as it starts to run. Now I'm gonna my running pliers are useless on this. Okay, are we good, Mark? Can we, we, yeah, okay. we're good. I so my running good. pliers, y'all, are useless on this. I'm just going to talk. I don't have to look at the camera. My running pliers are useless on this because if I take my running pliers and I go to run this out, it doesn't matter how good I score this, it is not going to go around that curve there. It's going to just continue. And it's going to continue to its weakest point, which is over here somewhere, okay? So what I want to do is I want to score this and I don't want to stop turning. I just want to roll and roll and roll. And I just came off. All right. So now you, you guys are going to see me use my, my uh, grousing pliers a little bit different. I'm going to use them sideways, but it, you see, I've got my index finger right under the score. And I just, I just pulled that down and that, score y'all that score ran to right there where i just put that dot okay so now what i'm going to do i'm going to change hands and i'm going to put my browsers on the inside again and i'm going to put my left hand index finger under the score all right you just heard, i know you heard that because my grandson heard it so it has gone all the way around now, Ray, like like you said last week, this the ball on your glass cutter is really good. We're gonna make sure that it's broken. Now, I'm gonna. This is where I told y'all I'm gonna show you. You turn your running pliers upside down. Okay. It just did you hear that? It popped again, y'all. Watch this. It's gonna come right out. Ah. Okay. Move your hand so they can see. I'm sorry. There you go. You want me to do it again real quick? Yeah, do it again. Let's do it again. Actually, let's do it on this because I can't hear it. You can't hear it. And here we go. Ready? That's real dense. This is very dense, y'all. Okay, we're going to try this again. And it may break wrong. I don't know. All right, you heard it, right? Okay, so we have our score line, and our run is right, right here where I'm, where my finger is. Let's, let's put a mark there. Our first uh, our initial score break is right there. So we're going to turn this around. I'm going just inside now. I'm using my grousing pliers a goofy way, but that's okay. Ah, you see? Oh, man. But I wanted to show you that because that's exactly what it did. It ran to its weakest point. And that's going to happen to just about every one of you. Just like it happened to me. So, you know, it's just it's just one of those things that 
when you break it like that, it just had, and two, you know, my score may have cooled off. But what I wanted to show you is if I took my running pliers and did this, watch what happens. Okay. It automatically goes, but you can't do it with your running pliers. You have to do it with your browsers because the part you wanted to keep is not this part. It's the part that's on the inside. So this is why I tell you guys, practice on your window glass. This is eight inch window glass. See that? You just pull it down. And when, when you do that, you've got all of this weight pulling down. So when you pull that down, it can't help but go that way. So it's all about the way you pull it and the way it cuts. So we're just going to do a little bit at a time. You have to move it up just a tad. I'm sorry. All right. A little bit at a time. And again, this, this may or may not work. Okay. So now my run, okay, it's a run, is all the way around the glass. So we'll take it and tap it. You don't have to tap it hard. Turn your running pliers over, upside down. You hear that, and you heard that, and there it goes. That was really a good trick, Ed. Okay. So, and I, you know, and it breaks on me just like it breaks on you. So I want everybody to, don't be frustrated. It happens, and it is, it is what it is. But I'm going to tell you something. After all that glass cutting, y'all, I'm going to share something with you tonight. That's going to make you cry. <laughs> Are well, we doing it? Uh, no, it made you cry when I broke that piece of great glass. Great demo, Ed. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. Everyone liked it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all very much. Again, it happens to everybody. So I want to share something with you. I'm going to bring this up. And this is this is a Euroboros glass, y'all. This is one of the sunset glasses that we're using in the marsh scene. Okay. This is a Euroboros. This is a number three. A couple months ago, you saw a number two, which is nothing like the number three. But anyway, I want to share this with you. Okay. Can you see that? Can y'all see that? Yes, we can. That is beautiful. What is This is that? a Euroboros number three. That's pretty. I want y'all to see. Okay, it. let me get get that up there. This is the back side of it. Okay. So this has yellow, cranberry, green, and violet running through it. So I'm gonna show you the front because it's shiny, and you can probably see it a little That's bit. That's pretty. Better. Okay. This, y'all, is part of a sunrise. This, well, when you see, when we get it all together over the next eight months, y'all will be able to see it. But I wanted to share that piece of glass with you. And the other thing I wanted to share with you is the fact that there were two of those and we bought both of them. <laughs> because we, we're going to need them. We're going to need them on this project. Beautiful glass. So I just wanted to share that glass with you. And we've got a lot more coming up. Um, matter of fact, our, our last excursion, shopping excursion, we went on for this project. I've even got some sheets of Armstrong glass that were made back in the 80s. That when we, just, when we show you those, they're going to be in this window right here because that's how big they are. And, and I don't want to cut them yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rochelle, has, are you, do you have any more demos you'd like to show us? 
right now? I have got a couple questions. No, let's do some questions, Barb, and okay. we'll come back and maybe somebody will need me to cut something else and show them. Um, how Mel to break some said glass. she'd like to see a video on the different metals and their and their uses. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. Different metals, as in different different leads and zincs and things like that. I think so. Yes. Um, Rochelle said she's been sick with COVID uh, for oh. six months and hasn't been in her studio. Sorry to hear that, oh, Rochelle. Rochelle. I'm glad you're feeling better. Um, she wants to know if her lead is getting old and does it need special care? Uh, really, what you need to do is, um, <laughs> I think what I would do is if you have an, an uh, empty pill bottle, is just uh, maybe drill a couple holes in it, put some rice in it and stick it in your box of lead. And that'll keep the humidity dried out inside of it. They usually, the boxes of lead usually come with a little bag of desiccant in them, but it's not enough to let it sit over a long period of time. But you can use rice for the same thing. So. Uh, I keep it away from damp, uh, yeah, damp situations sure. and don't store it on a concrete floor or anything yeah, like that. The It'll, concrete floor is moist. It's really wet. You don't realize it, but it's definitely moist. So. And if you if it does get a little oxidized again, you know, there's no reason to throw it away. You just clean it up after you before you solder it. But after you fabricate with it, then you can clean it up. Don't try to clean it up before you start the fabrication process. It'll be fun. Jennifer said she'd like to see some uh, foiling videos. Uh, yes. We were just talking about that yes, today on we, the way we home. Will, we will get to those. We're working our way through the cutting, and we'll, do each, we'll be doing each one. So, yes, very good. Thank you. Um, Mimi says happy birthday. She just realized she missed your birthday. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. I think that, that was a good demo, Barb. I, you know, I enjoyed yeah, that. Yeah, that was a good demo. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. Any more questions? Put them in the chat. I think I'm. Oh, thank you so much, Burnt Raw Toast. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. All right. We got that light bouncing tonight. Uh, Burnt Raw Toast says, uh, he, what a great technique. I have a tattoo that would need a in word cut like that and i have been looking for weeks on how to do it without drilling tattoo right you know that's the thing burnt raw toast the only other way to get that corner out of there is to drill it and when you drill it <clears throat> apparently you've done this before Whoops. when you drill it sorry about that. it makes <laughs> it makes <laughs> that corner really weak so uh yeah so if you can uh and then if you need that 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 radius even sharper than what you can do with your cutter. You can always use the uh, work surface, the step up work surface, and use that small quarter inch grinding bit and get that circle, you know, that radius a little bit steeper if you have to. So. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Any questions? Just put them in the chat. Uh, we're excited to be opening the retail store coming up September the 15th. 15th. We've got a, a big crate of Chicago art glass. Well, 45 sheets of beautiful, beautiful glass that's no longer being made. So uh, if you're in the, the area, way, so, yeah. let us know. And uh, Yeah, if you're in the area and you want to pop in on Wednesday, September the 15th, or Wednesday, September the 22nd, or Wednesday, <laughs> the September the 29th, you just let us know. And if you are in your RV, we have plenty of room in the parking lot park. here for you, for you to park, come in and see us. And, uh, you know, we don't, I can, I can service you with a 110 line if just to keep something running for you, your frigidator or whatever. But uh, we'd love to have you all come by and see us again, if you're camping in your RV or just need somewhere to turn around or you want to mooch dock for a night or two, you let us know. Yeah. We don't have any facilities, but you're, you could stay here a night and dry dock. And we have we have ten a uh, ten mile drive, and you can empty your tanks. So yeah, we're fifteen miles from the beach. Okay. Uh, do you want to do another demo? What would y'all like to see? Let's do let's do something right here. I'm gonna. I believe that uh, this is this is uh, this piece of glass right here that I got holding up. This is um, a half inch wide. Oh. And I think that my run, running pliers will do that. But in case you don't have 
a pair of running pliers and some of you may not, but you may have two pairs of browsing pliers. I'm going to try this. I have a pair of running pliers here and a pair of browsing pliers. But I think if I if I grab this like this and I grab this like this. Oh, they can't. Okay, there you go. Hold it right there. Mm -hmm. You see, I got them. They're kissing one another. Okay. So you can pull down. You're not, don't squeeze hard at all on your running pliers because remember your jaw is concave and convex and you don't want to pop that off because if you squeeze this hard enough, you'll break it. You see? So we don't want to do that. But if you'll use your running pliers to hold it and use your, hang on, use your grousing pliers to pull down and away. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. down and away then you'll feel much better about yourself and you'll actually be able to get that little piece of glass right off of there. Um, this was the smallest piece that I was able to get off right here. And if you, you see that, I'm going to put it on top of that pencil. That's pretty good. I, right. Okay. So I was able to get a quarter of an inch off with my grousing pliers on one side and my running pliers on the other. So here we go. Let's try that again, Barb. Okay. I just need this little sliver off of here. I'm going to hold one side with my runners. And we're going to try. Is that good, Barb? Mm-hmm. See? Doesn't always work. Probably should have ran it from the other There we go. Okay. okay. Yeah. So All you, right. you have to be careful and things, you know, that they don't always work out. And that's just hey, Julie. the way it is. Julie just showed up. Hey, Julie. So we take that. We're going to change hands because we want to hold the running pliers. I might be able to get my index finger under here and lay it on my knuckle and pull down and away. So there we go. It works out. But if you don't have a pair of running pliers, and you do have two pair of grousers and you need to, you know, you need to just break something off long and narrow that typically your running pliers won't break anyway because they're not wide enough. And we're going to try it. Let's see if we can get this to run. I don't know if I can do it or not, but we're going to try it. And here we go. We're going to go right here. It, we may have enough room on the jaw. There we go. We did. Oh, that's good. Okay. So we did. So your running pliers are going to run a strip of glass out that is a minimum of a half inch wide. You can end up with two pieces, five sixteen. So this piece of glass must have been five eighths wide. Right. So, but anyway, you know, take this. Let's play pickup stick. Okay. Okay. Sometimes it's very important that you do get those little strips out oh. like that. That's all right. All right. No, okay. that's fine. Okay. I, you know, when you get those little strips out like that, usually you're taking the time because you need them. And if you're doing copper foil work, a lot of times you're working so small because you want everything to be intricate. So not only are you cutting small pieces of glass, when you're foiling, you're using your X-Acto knife to cut that foil back to expose the glass. So yeah, you want to you want to introduce new ways for you to create and cut small pieces of glass that are very intricate and still make them look like the pattern. So using your tools in many different ways will help you do that. We had a question. Uh, someone, uh, let's see. I, I'm not sure who it was. I lost it on the thread, but wanted to know about beginner stained glass classes. No, excuse me. Patterns. Do we have some beginner? Pattern. Well, we do on our website right now. We have a beginner pattern of our cardinal. And, you know, just because the, the it's a cardinal doesn't mean it has to be red. It can be it can be a bluebird. It can be a canary, which means it can be yellow or green. But anyway, we also have our kayak pattern available online for you. And those patterns are both very simple, but they will teach you how to cut the glass correctly. Okay, and uh, Pauline is here. Pauline, welcome. She's been on Facebook with us, and she's just joined us on YouTube. Hey. So it's good to see you. I'm glad you found your way over here. Great. Um, 
Is that who you sent the link to today, Barb? Pauline? Well, we've been back and forth. Oh, about okay. How to get okay. Here. <laughs> well, thanks, Pauline. We're glad to have you on board. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Burnt Rolto says, How much for all those small strips? I'm in no way co confident to make those cuts. It's just, you know. Um, send me your sheet of glass and I'll cut your strips. We'll send it back to <laughs> I'll you. I'll send it back to you in strips. Yeah. Um, if you need to send us a, any kind of a letter, a note or anything, just go to conwayglass.com slash RDRV. And there is a uh, box there where you can send us a message. To contact us. Yeah. yeah. Send us a question and send us a message and I'll get back to you. So if you need us to cut something for you, like those thin strips for something, we'd be happy to do that. Yeah, you can send us the glass, send the pattern, you know, the pattern for the glass with it, and we'll cut it out. And I mean, we'll, we'll charge you accordingly, but it won't be, you know. The shipping will probably be a little bit. Uh, uh, more, I don't know if you all are having the same problem we are, but shipping went up again. So uh, oh God. price your work accordingly. And the service gets worse. The shipping, the cost goes up and the service gets worse. Uh, next live show, can you have three to five patterns in order from beginner to expert patterns? Hmm. I don't know about that. Next line of week? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> next week. This isn't all we do for a living, y'all. I uh, promise you. <laughs> no, we'll be happy to help you. Uh, Bert Raltos, send me a message and uh, I'll be, I can help you. Because we do you have need. patterns. We just haven't got them up online yet. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I do have some patterns. Yeah. Uh, uh, next live show is going to be a uh, viewer showcase. So uh, we're working on that and it should be a good one. It should be. Yeah. And we're doing a giveaway. So, yeah, so that next, next Monday, Monday night, night is night. viewer showcase, September 5th, right? Mark? Yes. Viewer showcase next Monday night. And we want to thank you all for sending your photos in because there's quite a few of them this time. And I'm glad that we asked you to send them in a couple of weeks prior to the event because it's given Barb time to get them all put together. So um, I'll be working on that this week and uh, want to thank everyone. We made 600,000 views this week. Yeah, we surpassed that. That was great. Yeah, and that we, we only do it because that. of y'all. And we made the 7,000. We're up to 7,050 subscribers. Some of you guys have been with us from the very beginning. So you know how long that's been trying to get our, we're, all of a sudden we're getting a bunch of subscribers and yeah. a lot of views. So we thank you for that. It's so very when, you, when you're, um, when you're talking about a more advanced pattern, what is it that you're looking for? Um, you know, because uh, basically the, the patterns that I can do for you that you can print out uh, can only fit on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper so that you can print them. But if you're, you, what are you looking for? A are you looking for a pumpkin by it? Are you looking for an airplane by it? Are you looking, are you, what, if you'll tell me what you're looking for, then maybe we can get those patterns drawn and get them put on, on the website for you. So. That's right. So um, Martha Crowder had a question about your razor blade hack. Uh, when you put the razor blades together to cut patterns, does one blade go inside the cardboard and the other blade outside and then tape it? No, Martha, the Martha, right? Barbara? Right. Okay. Martha, the, the cardboard that's wrapped around the razor blade, you take one off the razor blade, throw that away. Not the razor blade, but the cardboard, the other cardboard from the other razor blade goes between gets folded twice, like in the video and then put between the two razor blades and then it's taped. And then you can start cutting your pattern. And, you know, when Barbara said, hey, that's a razor blade hack. Y'all, I'll just tell you how old I am. <laughs> a hack used to be something that was messed up. And of course, now I understand a hack is something that's really cool. So I feel good about my hacks. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, because, I, you know, one of my goals in life was to never be a hack. And uh, now it's okay to be a hack. So anyway, oh, okay. try the razor blade trick. You're going to love it because those shears, you'll just throw them away. Okay. And, and Burt Raw Toast is trying to figure out where he should be on his patterns on the skill based rating on where he should be with his patterns. So, you know, you can change a pattern to your skill. So don't be afraid 
of any pattern because you can. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be afraid of anything that uh, you can make that pattern to your skill level by taking right. away some lines and making Yeah, you them. can eliminate lines on a, on a specific pattern, burnt raw toast to accommodate your skill. That's right. And well, we could, yeah. however, too, please um, don't sell your confidence short because you're a much, you're probably a much better glass cutter than you think you are. And just, you know, watch that lineup of videos that Barbara's got about all the different cuts that I'm doing, how to use your different pliers, how not, well, I can't teach you how not to get frustrated, but I swear <laughs> if you'll take your time and listen to that glass pop the first time and then just jump in behind it with your grouse and pliers and run the run, okay? Run the run and listen to your glass cutter. Your confidence should increase tenfold. Uh, Stella girl wants to know uh, why her grinder uh, shoots so much spray. Uh, you're probably using too much water. And what kind of grinder do you have? It's like a whiz, whizzling wizard, uh, because they have that sponge that's in the back. Okay. The, the whiz, whiz, whizzling and the wizard all have that sponge reservoir behind the wheel. And if you put too much water in it, the sponge is there to keep the diamonds cleaned off. But if you put too much water in it, the uh, the water gets under the diamond wheel that's spinning and brings it up and th to the top of the wheel and throws it off. And that's where you're getting all too much water. And you don't need that entire sponge they give you, correct? Oh, Am I heck correct? no. You, Get rid you of slice it. Slice it down. In half. Cut it in half. They give and you a two-inch sponge. Cut don't it in use half. the two-inch sponge because what it's going to do, it's going to wick up and all that water is going to out. So you keep the sponge low because right. it's only going to need to clean that bit, you know, the bit, that section of the bit Where down there using. and that yeah. water. And don't forget, using. you have a three-quarter inch bit. Most of the glass you're using is an eighth of an inch thick. You can move that bit, okay? You can move that bit uh, six times. Oh, <laughs> Renee said the word hack is a slang word for correctional officer. Mm, that's a shame. That's not a good word for some people, I guess. No, but um, I, that's why I didn't. Barbara's like, well, we're going to do a hack. I'm like, I'm not hacking nothing. Um, but yeah, apparently that, we have some hacks. So thank Stella you. Stella said, yes, it's an inland whiz. Uh, Stella, yeah, see if you could cut your little sponge your down. Your sponge too. shouldn't stick up any higher than halfway on your on your grinder bit, okay? Yeah, it just needs to stay wet, not soaking wet. And it may be that you cut that sponge that's in there in in thirds. Yeah. Because they do give you quite a bit of sponge, in it, but it it's designed for you to reuse it. Just stick it in a baggie put some tape on the back of your grinder with that and your Allen wrench in there and you're good to go. Okay. So uh, we have some uh, other questions coming up or That's anyone else would like to uh, ask a question. Yeah. I think we're about ready to go. And uh, Stella girl says, thank you. And I hope that helps you Stella, because honestly, we have a whiz, we have a whizzling, and we have a wizard uh, That's right. in the shop. And when, then we have a surprise for everybody. Yeah, we have something coming up that may solve some of your issues with the grinder. Um, so that's coming up soon. Yeah, it's we're excited about so it. So y'all don't forget, we do have the six and a half inch running pliers in stock now. We also have... The six and a half inch grousing pliers in stock now, both with blue rubber handles. I can't do anything about the color, but uh, now those I are like in stock blue. on our website, right? They are now, yes. The running pliers. The running, and what else? The oh, grousers. grousers. And, and yeah. the nippers. Yeah. And the nippers. Okay. So those are on our website. The other things that we recommend are at our Amazon store. And those links are also on our website. And I noticed a lot of y'all bought uh, iron temperature controllers this month. I'm sure that your work has changed. And we've thank had you. some. We've had some great, great reviews comments. on the iron temperature controller.
Yeah. So, so thank you for the kind words. And I, I, I try not to steer you wrong, y'all. And it, yeah. those of you that did comment were very nice comments, actually. Uh, okay. Really nice. <laughs> Mimi wants to know, in case this was already answered, uh, forgive her, but where can she find the razor blade video? Um, I posted it in the community page last week. It's a me sitting in front of a big stained glass window that's orange and green and red. Okay. Anything else? And you're going to love the razor blade trick. You know, you're, you're really going to like it. Yep. Yep. Okay. I think, oh, shears versus razor blade. Pattern shears versus razor blades. Thank you, Julie. Uh, the, thanks, Julie. <laughs> the so razor you can blade just one. go. You can go to our page and just do a search: uh, pattern shears versus razor blades, or either way, and and it'll find it for you. And we do show you how to make the razor blade trick. Just uh, again, each blade comes with cardboard wrapped around it. One blade's cardboard gets tossed. The other blade's cardboard gets folded. I believe it's twice, maybe three times to go in between the blades and then use electrical tape to tape it together and uh, be careful. Yeah. Okay. So uh, any more questions? Okay. We no. want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight, coming in, joining us and being part of our community here at Conway Glass and RDRV. And Ed, do you uh, want to ring the bell so everybody knows that they need to subscribe? <laughs> And, uh, and don't forget <laughs> to ring the notification bell because we want you to be aware when we come out with a new video. And so thank you so much, Burnt Raw Toast. We oh, appreciate you that again. so much. I'm going to have to ring the bell for you, Burnt Raw Toast. Great questions tonight, everybody. All right. That's great. Y'all, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We look forward to seeing you. Martha next has a question. Okay, Don't we're not yet. going anywhere. <laughs> what type of paper do you put your patterns on? I use a 40 pound weight, 48 inch by 200 foot banner paper. And it's on our suggested tools suggested by Ed on our website on the Amazon shopping page. Okay, y'all. We've got some great videos coming up. So uh, we appreciate y'all watching. And we had some great questions tonight. Barbara. Yeah, good and questions. I, you know. And thanks for all the support. And, and we love you. Thank you all for keeping me on my toes. And if there's anything that you're having problems cutting, maybe send us a picture of it. Instead, like instead of sending us your stained glass window for, uh, for our, our, thing that comes out about everybody's windows, send us a picture of a, of a cut that you're having in trouble with. And I'll see if I can't just duplicate it with my black marker and maybe show you how to cut it out for you. Thank I'll you. be happy to do that. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you.